Introduction to Python, Chapter 1. Welcome to Programming with Nav. My name is Nav, and I've got about 25 years of programming experience. I've done coding in almost all programming language. To name a few, C, C++, Java, .NET C Sharp, Visual Basic, Python, Shell Scripting, and in Database, uh, Ingress, MSQL, Sybase, Oracle, DB2, just to name a few. I'm specialized in retail websites, but uh, I started my career in banking. The history of Python, so Python is a widely used, interpreted, object-oriented, high-level programming language. It was created by Guido Van Rossum and first released in 1991. The reason it is an interpreted language, because you save the Python file in the extension .py and then you execute .py, which gets converted into a different file and then you run it hence it is called interpreted file it is a fully object oriented language it's it has got all the ingredient of the modern language hence it is a preferred language in most of the school colleges university and it is the first language which is introduced to kids as young as nine year old python is uh, even more popular than Java. The first version of Python was introduced in 1990, the second version in year 2000, and the third version in year 2008. So the version 3 of Python has been around for 13 years and is quite stable. If you go to the python.org and to the downloads, you can look at the history of uh, Python releases. So the first one, as I said, uh, version 2.0 released in 2001. And since then, various different uh, Python releases were released. So if you're interested, you can have a look at the release notes. And you can see 3.96 got um, released in June. Uh, so it, it is possible you might get a newer version here um, by the time you see this video. Now 3.9, uh, the end of support is till um, October 2025. So we have got five years of life uh, in this, so which is very good. In terms of uh, popularity of Python, if you go to pythoninstitute.org and uh, look at uh, this website, you can see in 2018, uh, Python was number fourth popular. In 19, it became number three. And since uh, 2019, November, Python is the most popular language with 26 person followed by Java. Um, I totally believe that uh, this is because it has been the most favored language in the school, colleges and university. To talk about uh, Python certification and how this course is based. So Python certification, you can go for entry level PCEP or an associate level PCAP and then the professional level. So if you look at uh, this website, you can see the entry level. It's mainly the concept of computer programming like data types, container function, condition loops, etc. So we are going to cover most of this in the first 14 sessions uh, of this training course. And we'll cover the PCAP certification, which is uh, intermediate level uh, certification uh, in the next eight sessions. Uh, after learning this too, you can, you can go for this certification Plus, you can learn more about uh, uh, PCPP1, PCPP2 um, at your own leisure. 
uh, once you have the fundamentals you can just learn any further things just uh, learning different libraries which is provided by python or different frameworks provided by python now python is used in uh, various different uh, industries um, i've just mentioned a few here um, it is widely used in ai and machine learning language machine learning uh, also in uh, data analytics there are various libraries uh, present which uh, help you with data science also it is widely used in data visualizations there are a lot of libraries uh, available for uh, simple graphical representation in this course uh, we'll be talking more about programming applications it is also used widely in web development there are web frameworks um, available like Django, Pyramid and Flash. Once you learn uh, Python, you can uh, jump into the gaming development. So for all the gamers, you can uh, do the game development using Pygame. Pygame is one of the software which you can download and uh, whatever you learn in this uh, course, you can apply it and then have your own game released in android world and to the outside world and uh, there you go you become a gamer and finally in the finance sector now in finance uh, uh, everything is now um, data and big data and there are uh, libraries uh, available where you can use uh, python to deal with big data and finally um, learning any language we have to say hello world as a programming ritual so we are going to do that now this is our first python program for hello world and uh, let's run it and there you go you just said uh, hello world to the world that's our successful first running the python program so Welcome to Python world. In next chapter, we'll be talking about uh, how to install Python and how to run the uh, Python program, etc. So thanks for watching. I have provided the links in the description below for the Python and PyCharm download. I have also recommended three Python books to enhance your knowledge. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching. Installing Python Chapter 2 In this chapter, we are going to install Python, Notepad++, and PyCharm. We will go through each of them in detail. To install Python, first of all, go to Python dot org then go to download the latest version as of now is 3.9.6 this could change but we are going to install whatever is available the latest so i'm going to install 3.9.6 python Once downloaded, I've got my Python downloaded file in my download directory. So I'm just going to double click. You'll get a pop up window where it will show you the directory, um, also show you the installation uh, recommended. So make sure you also click in that you add the path to the system variable path this will help you with uh, later settings once done continue press install now this will take few minutes
once you have downloaded python go to c drive and uh, type in python minus capital v and uh, you will get uh, all the you'll get the version you've just installed so this is a good way of uh, checking if python is installed correctly uh, you can also do python minus h to get all the commands so h stands for help and you will get all the commands uh, which you can run from python command prompt um, next we will try and uh, install uh, notepad plus plus now notepad plus plus is a a simple text editing software so we'll go to the notepad plus plus site and uh, download and then double click on the executable Once installed, and press agree and select the path. Next, next, install. Once done, you can do finish, and that will complete the installation. Once installed, we'll get. Uh, this pop-up window will the notepad plus plus window will automatically open and uh, yeah we are ready to write our python program so if we say open existing file and chat one and i'm just going to open python program simple first hello world uh, in the language you can you can go to you can select python which is pre-selected in my case so it it shows you is nicely color formatted um, and uh, once you type in so it's print statement as we already know um, it's just print and uh, single quotes or double quotes uh, hello world so save it and i'm just going to show you how to compile this so in, in my C DOS prompt, I'm going to go to my directory where I've kept it. So Python training. So this is my hello world program. So all I need to do to run a Python program is Python name of the file and you get hello world. Congratulations, you have just completed the Hello World. And uh, this is how you run the Python program. Um, from here on, we won't use this method of executing. This is just for um, completeness I've showed you. Uh, it is good to know how to compile a program, a Python program, and also how to use a Notepad++. We won't be using henceforth this method. This is only for people uh, who has got uh, limited capacity in their uh, um, laptop or desktop and they don't have uh, uh, PyCharm installed. And now the last bit. Um, for this, we need to go to PyCharm website. It is provided by jetbrains.com and it is the top um, ID for uh, Python. It's the number one and uh, you got professional or community. Now for this purpose of this uh, training for entry level and uh, the intermediate level, uh, we are more than sufficient what a community level free open source program provides. Uh, for the people um, who wants to do more which uh, professional level provides, you can go for professional, but uh, I'm going to install the community version. So it will take a minute to download. Once uh, the folder, uh, the file is downloaded, I have got it available here now. Um, double click on it.
you'll get this pop-up window press next uh, choose whatever file location I'm going to choose the standard one uh, space required is 1 GB so hopefully you got 1 GB um, available in your file system uh, I'm not going to uh, I'll select this and next install again this will take about a minute or two it took about uh, just under two minutes to install so I'm just going to say finish click run and finish um, I got this uh, pop-up message saying uh, community edition jet brains and uh, I've read through the terms and condition and click checkbox and continue Um, it's up to you if you want uh, to share anonymous uh, statistics uh, I would prefer don't send next you will uh, end up uh, in this welcome to PyCharm um, window just expand and uh, you get an option of uh, creating a new project or opening a new project or opening a new file so let's create a new project So it, it knows about where the Python has been installed and uh, I'm going to create my new project in Python sources. We'll create a virtual environment uh, for tips for now. You can say don't show me the tip or if you feel like uh, seeing the tips please go through um, and that's it that's our pi charm install so I'm going to uh, run the hello world again but this time in pi charm so yeah you click uh, the code which you have written or create a new file so file can be created using new uh, new file I'm going to run this hello world which we have already seen using notepad plus plus so all you need to do is run hello world and it will open up a run window and it will say hello world and the new style of doing print statement so I'll save this and I'll run it again hello world and you can see hello world and hello world again so two print statement so that's it that's for uh, uh, chapter 2 so what we have done today is installed Python uh, we have also installed uh, notepad plus plus we went through uh, running the Python program in uh, writing the Python program in notepad plus plus and executing the Python program in command prompt and then we installed PyCharm and then uh, we ran the same hello world using PyCharm. With PyCharm, things get much easier. Um, also, I just wanted to share a few things about PyCharm. Um, I've chosen a black Dracula uh, background. Um, so I'll just uh, show you. Uh, if you go to Configure Editor tab, uh, to so first of all with appearance and behavior if you go to appearance so there are four four kind of appearance which you can get one is IntelliJ light so it is very bright for my eyes and not suitable for this training session so I won't choose this um, 
windows 10 light again quite bright um, so for this training i would choose this high contrast uh, not for me thank you and uh, Dracula, I find it nice and soothing for my eyes and perfect for this training session. I do find uh, all this font might be too small for you to view. So I'm going to increase the font. You can, uh, I can also choose uh, a different font, but I'm happy with uh, Segeo UI. It is just the font size. So let's see if 16 is good enough for us. I think 16 is quite good enough but what you must have noticed is it has changed this but it, did, it didn't change this that is because this is the editors panel and uh, we need to go and change the editor setting so I'll go under editor under font and the size here is says 13 so let me see how 15 looks like so this should change on, once I click apply and uh, I think 15 is just about right so that's it for this chapter thank you for watching I have provided the links in the description below for the Python and PyCharm download I have also recommended three Python books to enhance your knowledge if you like this video please like comment subscribe and share Thanks for watching. Chapter number three. In this session, we'll talk about print statement, input statement, and comment. This session and next 10 session, we'll learn all about Python programming concepts like data types, conditions, loops, functions, etc. So I am in my PyCharm, chapter number three. So let's talk about uh, comments first. So Python allows you to do one line comment. It doesn't allow you to do multi-line comments. Comments uh, can be done with an hash and anything followed is commented out. You can write uh, different uh, messages so that uh, your program uh, is easy to understand now here i said uh, the aim of this program is to allow the in user to input name and age now let's talk about the input statement input statement uh, is a word input followed by open bracket and uh, in string I mentioned give me your name and then I'm printing the name so name is stored in a variable and then I'm printing the name similarly I'm saying input enter your age as input and I'm storing it in a variable age and then I'm printing both name and age here we'll talk we'll talk about uh, type a bit later but just to understand what we have learned so far, I'm going to run the program. So as soon as I ran the program input, it is asking me, give me your name, which is same as what I've given here. So I'll say student. So it is printing your name is student as line number four. Then it is asking me for the age so let's say 10 it is saying it is printing out this saying student your age is 10 now line number eight what i've say what i've done is i printed the type of age now this age or this name after when when we do input and when the user en ent enters the data, it is stored in the variable. Now this is to, this statement tells you that the type is a string. So whenever you enter an input, it is stored in the form of a string.
next uh, we can do some uh, type casting so for example if i want to uh, change the age from string to integer i do this type casting so i'm basically converting a string into an integer and uh, i'm storing it in a variable called uh, agent and uh, we can uh, we can print this is 10 so in this statement now it is saying your age is 10 now if we do slight variation to this let's say i don't want it to convert to int but i want it to the age to be converted to a float now what is a float a float is a number which is uh, which can take uh, decimals so let's say age float and uh, And let's print this um, I'll save this doing con control s and then right click and then run input then student let's see this time the student is 15 years old and uh, I've got uh, your age is 15 there is no decimal here because I did a mistake I am even though I am converting this to a float I'm printing it as a decimal so we need to do float and save I'll have to run this again run student age 15 and this time I got uh, in decimal now in case uh, uh, in, in our next print statement, we'll talk more about uh, uh, how to print integer decimal and various different examples. So just wanted to show you in this example input and how it is stored, etc. Next, we'll learn about uh, print statement. So uh, we'll go through our uh, print.pi example. So the aim of this uh, is to try out a different print statement. Um, to start with, the print syntax is as shown here. So it is print, word print, uh, followed by a com uh, bracket. Uh, and it can have multiple objects. It can have a parameter called separator, a parameter called end. Uh, you can also pass in a file to print and you can have a flush with a boolean value true or false we'll go through uh, examples here for object separator and end and I'll, I'll explain to you briefly about file and flush so to start with objects now here i've got two objects a string object hello and a string object how are you separated by comma so it is multiple objects now if i run this you can see hello how are you now if we want to let's say i want to show you how the separator works so i'll save this and run this so you can see there are two objects and it is i'm telling it to be separated by this so you can see the effect now let's see how the third one the separator with the end works which is our third example so let me save this and then run again so here we are saying hello followed by separator print the whole thing followed by the dollar sign now because we haven't given uh, end of line our next line print has come here so next I'll comment it uh, we'll talk about uh, different print statement 
So let's say let's run this again. So I'm printing this five values. So I'm printing a number 10 in a decimal format, exponential format, float format, octal format, and hexadecimal format. So in decimal format, the syntax is we give percentage D followed by for exponential percentage E and float percentage F and octal is percentage O and hexadecimal is percentage X and you can see the values here. Now you can see for a float number it has given six decimal points here that is by default so if I want just two decimal I would say 0.2 F save this number and let me show you this example and you can see only two decimal is shown um, and before uh, we end this chapter let me just show you the calculator so I've opened up a calculator in programmer view and uh, let's say I want number 10 so uh, just wanted to show you the output compare it with this hexadecimal is a decimal 12 10 octal is 12 as shown here and binary will learn later so file is uh, you can print uh, the whole file if you give the file followed by the path name uh, it'll and do the print it'll print the whole file and flush uh, by default the value is uh, false it's a boolean value um, and it is uh, used to flush uh, the buffer that's it for this chapter thank you chapter number four variables types and casting the data types uh, the built-in uh, data types provided by python are string integer float complex boolean list tuple range dictionary set frozen set byte byte array and uh, memory view so out of this the ones uh, highlighted in dark which is string integer float boolean list tuple range and dictionary we will cover the other ones which are not uh, in uh, bold format we won't be covering so to start with uh, the most basic format of uh, data types is string so it is just like string like how we saw the hello world we stored it in a variable so that is string an integer is a whole number so without any decimal so that's uh, integer format a float is a one uh, variable where we store uh, with the decimal number so for example uh, 10.02 uh, and the boolean boolean is a value which is true or false so you can have only two values so this the this four are the most basic uh, data types now next you got uh, collection data types uh, collection array data types so we'll go through them so we have got four uh, collection arrow data types. The first one is list. A list is a collection which is ordered and uh, it's changeable. So once you create, you can uh, it is in a particular order and you can change it as well. Uh, and it allows duplicate. So uh, tuple is one is a collection which is ordered and unchangeable. So uh, when you create a tuple it will be in certain order but you can't uh, change it and it allows duplicate as well set is a collection which is unordered and unindexed and no duplicates allowed and dictionary is a collection which is ordered and changeable no duplicates allowed now all this four um, collection array we will deal with it and we'll go in much detail in a separate session so for each of this, I've given separate session. So we'll go through it uh, in those session. 
So I've, I've got this uh, program called uh, variable and types. So I wanted to show you how we store it and how we print it and how what is the type of each of them. So starting with uh, uh, we got uh, variable x storing in string. So and we are printing it and I'm uh, uh, printing the type of it. Similarly for uh, integer I'm storing value integer value in x and then printing it and printing the type. So uh, same with the float. Float takes a decimal number so I'm storing float in the x and uh, again printing it same same with boolean um, so we'll i'll run this uh, program and then we'll go through the collection type as well so let's run it so there you go it has run the program so first thing uh, string example um, hello world it print it it has printed hello world and it is telling me the type is uh, a string type. Similarly, integer uh, is printed as 20 and type is integer. Float is again, uh, it has printed the decimal number because I've given a decimal number here and it is, it is telling me it is of type float. So whatever, um, so you can notice uh, the value of X here, the type of X is string. Here the type of x is integer and the type of x has changed to float here. Same with the boolean example. I'm storing x as boolean and then type it is showing as boolean. Now coming to our collection array. So list is stored. So we, we can create a list using this syntax. It takes a um, square bracket as I mentioned earlier we'll talk about a list tuple set and a dictionary in much detail in uh, and uh, we have got each session for them but uh, just wanted to show you the syntax for it allocating X variable X as the list and then I'm I'm checking what is the type of this list so so it is when a print statement uh, when you when you say print the list it prints the whole list like this so how we have stored it and also the type is list similarly for tuple we used uh, uh, bracket round brackets uh, and we can sh create uh, tuple using this format and uh, again uh, we see when we print it we see it exactly how we have stored it and the uh, class is tuple same with set uh, set uh, the syntax is curl bracket as you can see and uh, in the result we can see curl bracket and set when we print the value in here now range is an interesting one so again we'll cover range in much more detail but here i'm saying create a range of uh, a 6 so x will have a value from 0 to 6 and uh, when I printed it uh, it has printed the range and uh, of type range so that's uh, that's about uh, we have covered about all all the variables um, which uh, and the types which can which is uh, useful for uh, building our Python foundation. Next, we'll talk about uh, casting. So you can, uh, there are three uh, methods provided, functions provided by Python for casting. One is int, one is float, and one is string. So using this int, we can convert a string or a float into an integer. So for example, um, if I've got a number 10.5 and if I type cost it to int, so int 10.5, I'll get a output as 10 because it has converted the float into the integer. Similarly, if I say convert a, an integer to float, so if I give 10, it'll convert it into 10.00. Um, so using this integer I can uh, convert a string or a float into integer for float I can convert a string 
or an integer to a float and uh, for string when when I use a string costing I can convert a integer or a float into a string now let's have a look at an example so let me clear this and then yeah example so first example here is I'm doing a type casting so I'm converting so here is a simple I'm converting integer to integer so X will have a value of integer here I'm converting float to an integer and here I'm converting a string to an integer so let's run it and let's see what we get so to start with let's run it again there you go so the first one is integer example so one is one the 2.8 has become two and three string has become a three integer now similar to this uh, concept we can uh, talk about um, the float works in a very similar way that is it converts uh, integer float or a string into uh, a float so for example I've got 1 becomes 1.0 2.8 remains 2.8 string 3 becomes a float 3.0 and a float 4.2 is 4.2 so that's our float example and let's have a look at the string example so in in this uh, i've taken a string s and uh, s1 uh, convert it convert uh, string s1 to string convert uh, in second i uh, converting integer 2 to string and third is float to string 3.0 so when i run it um, s1 remains as it is the integer becomes a string so integer 2 becomes a string and uh, 3.0 again becomes a string so it is a string not a uh, float here so z is a string so there you go so in this chapter we have learned uh, about all the different variables and types and we have also learned about uh, costing from here on uh, we will be building all the building blocks of uh, Python and uh, the best thing for you guys to do is go and practice all the different variables and uh, types and uh, start uh, getting your hands uh, dirty um, and uh, create uh, some programs for yourself uh, in PyCharm or in Notepad++ as we have seen in uh, chapter 2 uh, at the end of uh, session 12 or session 13 we'll talk about some real life example so till then uh, i would i would like you to try different uh, syntax and get yourself comfortable with all the python syntax chapter number five list now list is used to store multiple items uh, in a single variable List is a collection which is ordered and changeable and it allows duplicate member. Um, list is uh, one of the four built-in type uh, data type provided by Python for storing collection of data. The other three are tuple, set and dictionary. All four uh, have their different usages and uh, the way you use uh, any of this will depend upon uh, the requirement so for example um, as mentioned list is uh, ordered and changeable and it allows duplicate so um, so you will use list uh, whenever you want uh, uh, whatever values you added in a list uh, to be in the order which you have added uh, if you want to change any value suppose you have added uh, uh, created a list of three items but you want to delete the second item so you can do that in list and if you want to have a second and third item as the same value so duplicate value you can have it in the list so if all of this requirement uh, is valid then uh, you will use list 
um, the usage of uh, tuple set in dictionary we will use will learn about it in its own section which will be followed by after this section um, now it is important to know that list the creation we use square bracket tuple will use curl uh, round bracket and uh, set will use curl bracket so it is important to know these differences because um, in interview you will you will you need to know these differences um, so there you go also one more thing is uh, uh, any collection object if they are changeable then uh, the language provider in this case python will provide you all the methods so uh, which will help you to change so we'll see <clears throat> this is a list of uh, methods provided by built-in method provided by python so you can see so first one is append so you can add an element to the end of the list second is clear so removes all the element from the list third is copy returns you a copy of the list fourth is count returns the number of element with the specified value fifth is extend so adds an element uh, of a list to the end of the current list index will return you the index of the first element with the specified value insert adds an element at a specified position pop removes the element at a specified position remove removes the item with the specified value reverse reverses the order of the list so it is important like because it's changeable you get all this pop reverse remove extend append so and last one is sort which will sort the list so let's have a look at the example so what i've done here is uh, i've created uh, three list here first one is uh, number so it's an empty list second one is a string again an empty list and third one i've defined it as a name so it has uh, pre-populated with three items uh, in the list now when the with the list the first item is in index position zero the second item is index position one and third item is uh, index position two so that's how all the collection uh, data type works so uh, here i'm using the append built-in method provided by python for list so i'm saying i'm appending to the empty number i'm appending number one two three and for the string i'm appending uh, hello and world and then i'm printing a number and just printing a, a example thing and uh, then printing a string and uh, i'm creating a second name variable and i'm storing a string which is the first index position value of name so in here the first name would be eric so when i print this it will print my variable which is the second name and then we'll come back to this so let me run this uh, program so the first one so the first print statement is this one so it is printing number one two three so it is printing in it in the same order in which i created it so the order is this so i added one first and then two and then three so it is printing it in the same order so hence it is ordered and because i'm using append after creation of a list it is changeable as well yeah uh, for the string list uh, i'm printing it and again it is printed it in the same order hello world and uh, lastly the second name so we can see the first index position the name is eric which is this uh, now let's have a look at this four statement so line number 20 i'm saying remove and then uh, i'm sorting the name and then i'm printing remove and number 
So let's have a look. So as you can see, this remove two, it has removed um, the number two. So it is removing the value two, uh, and then sorting the number. So I'm sorting the name which is here. So it is sorted in alphabetical order. So Eric comes first, Jessica second, and John third. So there you go, the example of a list with uh, different um, built-in methods. Now, second one, uh, this is a small example where uh, I'm creating a list with uh, three items in it, all of them string value. Here, I just wanted to show that uh, I can mix and match so I can add a string as the first three items and then I can have number in the next two items. So if I print this, so you can see it is again in the same order as I've created them, but you can mix and match string. So it can, a list can take any objects. So that's, that's it for the list. So we'll learn about uh, set and uh, tuple and dictionary in the next few sessions. Thank you. Chapter number six, tuple and sets. Tuples are used to store uh, multiple items in a single variable. Now, the four uh, built-in uh, data types for, for collections um, other than tuple are list, set, and dictionary. All of them has got different usage. We have already learned about list. Uh, in this session, we'll learn about uh, tuple and set. And in next session, we'll learn about dictionary. Now, it is very important uh, that uh, you know the differences between all these four um, data types because this is um, uh, this topic of collection array is the most important and most usually asked in the interviews and the interviewers favorite topic because they can grill you onto usage of uh, the collection and what which uh, data type uh, to use so uh, you should be able to know the difference and should be able to convince the interviewer why you're using list or set or uh, tuple or dictionary in the scenario given by interviewer so coming back to tuple, uh, tuple is a collection which is stored in ordered and unchangeable. You can't change it. It is uh, ordered. And uh, as we already know, we have seen one, uh, one example of tuple already. We use round brackets. So again, uh, reiterating, list is square bracket, tuple is round bracket, set is curl bracket. And we'll learn about dictionary in the next chapter and a tuple does allow duplicate now a tuple a python only provides two methods for tuple one is count and the other is uh, index so count returns the number of times a specific value occurs in a tuple and index searches the value and returns the position of the value let's have a look at the examples now So I've written some uh, tuple code already and I'll run past uh, this code with you and uh, let's clear and then get, let's get ready for the tuple example. So the aim is to create a tuple and just to play around with the uh, tuple and just to explain to you what I mean by it allows a duplicate or not. So the first example is uh, I'm creating a tuple and the variable name is tuple1 and I'm adding uh, um, apple, banana and cherry into tuple variable tuple1 printing it and uh, type I'm printing the type of the tuple1 variable similarly here I'm in tuple2 variable I'm creating a tuple with uh, five item but if you notice two of them like apple is repeated 
two times and banana is repeated two times um, so because it allows duplicate uh, we should see all five items Uh, in tuple 3, I'm um, dealing with numbers, so just to show you, it can take numbers as well. And tuple 4, I'm uh, dealing with uh, um, the boolean, so just to show you, it can take boolean as well. And then printing, printing it and uh, printing the type so that uh, you know what the type is. And I'm just using the two method. So in tuple, we are going through all the method provided by. Um, by Python so index of 7 so in this what will we get written and then count of 7 so how many times 7 is there so let's run this so run. okay so um, in our first code uh, we said uh, we created a tuple with apple banana cherry so apple banana cherry got printed here and the class uh, the type is class tuple in the second uh, piece of code uh, we have added duplicate and uh, we wanted to check if uh, duplicates are allowed and uh, duplicate is allowed because it printed the whole of tuple um, in this one we have used numbers and it is printing numbers in the same uh, order as uh, we have input it so it hasn't played with our order so it is the order in which we have created again the class is tuple and uh, finally in tuple 4 we created the uh, boolean true false false and it does give us same it it is allowing duplicate because false is repeated two times and the two methods uh, first one is uh, uh, index 7 so so where the first occurrence of 7 is so 7 is here if you can see and the index is 0 1 2 so it has written 2 to us and in second one I'm saying um, give me the count number of count for or 7 so because count will be 1 and 2 so we got 2 so just let's uh, play with this uh, let's say we want 9 here and let's see what is the count for nine it should be one so run and we got one so that's about tuple we have gone through everything about tuple so i would recommend you can uh, please uh, practice tuple uh, and uh, try and understand the difference between list tuple next uh, we'll be talking about set um, hi, I haven't seen a set in in the entry level exam. Like I haven't seen the topic set being mentioned, but nevertheless, it is uh, as I mentioned. It is um, the the whole uh, collection uh, data type is a very favorite topic of uh, interviewer. And uh, for completeness, I need to tell you about set as well. So set again are used to store multiple items in a single variable set is uh, one of the four built-in types the other three are list tuple and dictionary we already learned about uh, list and tuple now set is a collection which is both unordered and unindexed so no matter in which order you um, create a set it will just manage itself it won't have it in any order and it is not index um, set uh, this uh, the syntax for set is using curl bracket i'll repeat for list it's square bracket and for tuple it's round bracket and the set doesn't allow duplicate now let's see what functions uh, for what methods does python gives for set so these are the list of methods which python gives for set i would recommend you to pause the video at this point of time and uh, just read through the different methods um, it, uh, all these methods are used for like for example add is for adding uh, a new element clear is for 
um, removing everything from the set and so on and so forth um, it is kind of self-explanatory uh, all of this uh, but unless and until you don't try each of them you won't know the subtle differences between the different methods so i would strongly recommend you to go through um, as much as you can and just keep um, practicing and uh, let's have a look at the example of set so here i am again creating number of sets so first one again i'm creating a set one with a curl bracket as you can see and i'm creating um, three value object string value object inside set apple banana cherry um, <clears throat> and printing it and typing the printing the type of uh, set one variable again um, in the set two i'm creating i'm purposely putting in some duplicate uh, values like apple is duplicated and banana is duplicated so because set doesn't allow duplicates so let's see what uh, what we'll get out of it so we should not uh, so what should happen is we should only get uh, one value of each so duplicate should not uh, uh, get added similarly uh, in the third uh, example I'm creating set three with numbers so far one five seven nine three seven so seven is uh, repeated two times and I'm using a method provided by so after creating a set three I'm just adding in eight yeah so total there will be one five seven seven is repeated two times so one five seven nine three and then eight so six item should get printed when I print this and then similarly with boolean set four i'm purposely putting in false two times but it should get print printed uh, um, it, the set should be created with only two values true and false <clears throat> we'll discuss this in a minute but let's uh, get ready for executing this uh, running this set so let's run this so as you can see our first example uh, apple banana cherry so the the object got created uh, if you see the order i've cr create i while creation i've uh, given apple first banana and cherry in that order but the creation of the set it just depends upon how the python wants it's it's an unordered uh, um, collection so it will create in an unordered fashion so it won't be in this order like tuple and list again in our second example what we can see is uh, I'm purposely given duplicate but duplicate didn't get added and we only got uh, uh, <clears throat> set with three value um, we would also notice that the type is set in this case now in this uh, third example i've given uh, seven object but uh, like numbers but one was duplicate so and i've also used uh, add method so we can see six was added the order again you can see the order is not in the order which i i have entered it so that's why it is unordered and it's unindexed as well and uh, set four we only have got uh, false and true now now we have seen an ad now I, I just wanted to show you a clear method as well so when i say set three dot clear it clears everything from the set so this is what happened when i printed it uh, something else uh, I wanted to mention at this point of time now that we have started coding multiple line of code um, PyCharm provides this now this basically gives you a coding uh, warning and errors and uh, nice to do things so basically it is saying um, it didn't like the way I have not provided a space in here so uh, PyCharm will give you 
a recommendation and uh, we will uh, try and follow the recommendation it is always good to have this number mentioned here uh, always zero so if I save this now it's gone it's a there's a green tick mark which is like a code is uh, having no warning or error as per PyCharm it is always good to get this green signal and uh, not to have any error or warning if there is error here our program will refuse to run but if there is warning here our program will run but uh, you will have PyCharm will give you a, a warning like like this um, so we'll discuss uh, more about this uh, as we go along and uh, in a future session where our code will get a little bit um, complex and we'll start using different building blocks um, we will uh, learn more about this and the coding standards which we need to use so that's it for set and tuple and we have already learned uh, list so next session we'll learn about uh, dictionaries and that will finish our collection chapter 7 dictionaries now dictionary is the last one of the collection uh, data type provided by python the other three we already um, have gone through they are list tuple and set now dictionaries um, are used to store uh, data but this one is slightly different than the other three which we have seen because this one stores um, in a key value so for example um, you can store uh, like name as a smith and then age as uh, 23 for example so you can you can like in here the key will be the name and the value will be smith or the key will be age and the value will be 23 and so on and so forth so you create you can create a storage array with the name value keypad also dictionaries are uh, um, they are ordered they are changeable and they don't allow duplicates now any uh, data type which is changeable then um, python will have to provide you with uh, methods which uh, which will allow you to change uh, the type so what we will see is um, uh, the methods which uh, python will provide you for example clear or uh, pop or pop item um, update and all that that is all for changeable copies like copy uh, returns a copy for dictionaries and uh, so so on and so forth so i will advise you to pause the video at this point of time and uh, read through all of this this uh, all of this should make sense but again uh, i would highly recommend you to try all of this um, in an example and just get used to the dictionaries and uh, its method let's uh, have a look at the code now here is an example of a dictionary so as i mentioned it is having it will have a name value pair so the name is uh, the key is name here value is smith the key is year value is 1990 key is sport value is football similarly i've created uh, another dictionary with um, same variable name so this variable will be overwritten but here uh, i am purposely added a duplicate value and then we'll see what happens uh, this because it doesn't allow duplicate it won't get this won't be created then we'll print dictionary and also we'll uh, print the type of the dictionary let's let's run this and then i will explain about all the methods um, So as you can see in the first example, 
we have got uh, just uh, three key value pair name smith year 1990 sports football in the second example uh, we don't have sport two times because it doesn't allow duplicate uh, the type of uh, the collection type is dictionary i've, I've purposefully made some uh, made sure i get some error and warning here not error warning here because uh, it likes the collection to be in the straight line i personally find this one more readable but just for the sake of uh, keeping this id happy i'm going to try and save it and this number is reduced also if you click on this it basically gives you the warning saying there are duplicate keys here so it will warn you um, the file will still be okay to run so if i want to run it uh, as we have already seen it will still run but it will warn you so if you if you remove this this two warning will go away now uh, to have a look at the methods so chap 7 dot value will give you all the value just the values it will give you so smith sport and uh, sorry smith 1990 and football similarly if you give a chapter 7 an item uh, it will give you all the items chapter 7 and uh, keys it will give you all the keys and clear will clear it all so let's have a look at uh, what has happened here so in the dictionary's value which is this piece of code uh, it has given us just the value which is smith 1990 and football uh, i've also um, printed the type of it so type is dictionary value so good to know uh, also then uh, returning an item so basically it is uh, returning uh, a list so which is a square bracket and it is uh, giving us uh, comma separated so this is one item this this is second item and this is third item so um, again the type is dictionary item and finally uh, just to get so this piece of code is just to get the keys so we got the keys back which is name year and sport and last but not the least uh, if I want to clear I want to use method clear to clear the chapter 7 uh, dictionary so once I do that I will get the nothing back so that is that's it for dictionary i would recommend you to go through all this four uh, dictionary type sorry uh, data types uh, for collection which is list tuple set and dictionaries i will uh, highly recommend to go through all the methods and understand the differences between all four of this this is interviewers one of the favorite topics and because uh, because of the subtle difference between all of this and the usage um, questions will be asked on this chapter number eight basic operators so so far we whatever we have learned about uh, data types and uh, variables uh, we'll be using it so python divides the operator in the following groups um, the first one is arithmetic operators then assignment operators comparison operators logical operator identity operators membership operator and uh, bitwise operator now in this course we will only cover uh, we won't cover identity and membership operator but uh, we will cover all the others because uh, the identity and members uh, they are in the advanced level and you will learn in uh, once you do the advanced level 
certification so for our entry level and associate level certification we only need the five so the arithmetic uh, operator so it is a normal uh, um, operation what you will also see in your calculator so uh, for example the plus is addition uh, no surprise there minus subtraction um, star is multiplication slash is division percentage is modulus so modulus is where uh, suppose uh, if you divide 17 by 3 the remainder is 2 so modulus is 2 exponential is you multiply the number that many number of times we'll, we'll learn about more about exponential and floor division which is double slash is uh, for example again let's take 17 divided by 3 so you just remove the decimal number so 17 divided by 3 like four di floor division if we do the answer will be 5 so we'll learn about this uh, in our example next is uh, assignment operators so we've got five assignment operator equal to so example is x equal to 5 so variable x gets assigned 5 simple now plus equal to now this is uh, similar in majority like most of the languages like c plus plus and uh, c sharp as well uh, where uh, x if i say x plus equal to 3 it becomes it actually means x equal to x plus 3 so you add 3 to whatever the x value of x is uh, the rest of the things uh, will follow in the similar way so which is minus equal to becomes x minus equal to 3 will become x equal to x minus 3 same with uh, uh, star equal to is multiplication equal to so x equal to x multiply by 3 same with the division so I, I think you got the idea um, we'll learn about a few of this example uh, in our example next is a comparison operator everything here should make sense uh, so double equal to is used whenever you are comparing two variables you use double equal to this is again common across different uh, languages like java and c sharp uh, along with python so double equal to is equal to and exclamation equal to is not equal to greater than is so this uh, this bracket is called is used for greater than and then less than uh, greater than equal to again uh, it's self-explanatory and less than equal to and uh, finally logical operator we have got and which means returns true if both statement are true uh, or is uh, returns true if one of the statements are true and not meaning reverse the result so returns fall if the result is true so let's have a look at it from uh, example point of view and it will make more sense i've assigned a variable x equal to 17 so we have used equal to operator here uh, y equal to 3 yeah so I won't do I won't give, show you the example of plus addition subtraction multiplication it's quite easy so let's start with uh, division modulus floor division and exponential uh, so let's have a look at this when we do x divided by y and x modulus y x floor division y and x exponential y let's run this example and see what happens all right so when I do x divided by y, x is 17, y is 3, so I get answer in decimal number. Next is uh, x modulus y, so uh, the remainder is 2, so we got the answer 2. Similarly, x floor division y, we got the answer 5, so it takes out uh, any decimal places or modulus. And... Uh, x exponential y so 17 exponential 3 so 
let's let me show you the example here so let's do so 17 multiply by 17 multiply by 17 equal to 4913 so that's what it has done it has multiplied 7 3 times and we got answer 4913 all right there is our arithmetic operator now let's do a bit of uh, assignment operator and then comparison operator so here our value of x is 17 so i'm doing x plus equal to 2 um, so i'm basically i'm saying x equal to x plus 2 so answer here should be 19 again uh, here uh, i'm doing a comparison operator so i'm using double equal to and i'm saying um, for now just think of this as a if statement we have got a separate session for the if statement so just think about it as a proper as a comparison statement so uh, here i'm comparing i'm i'm saying if uh, 3 equal to x the value of x is 19 then print uh, comparison so because it's not equal so our comparison should not get printed similarly i'm using an and logical operator here x equal to 19 which is true and y equal to 3 so our value of y is 3 which is again true so we should get this printed and uh, an example of uh, not so print x equal to 19 so we should get a true value here because it's a boolean value uh, let's see yep it will stop complaining and here also it will stop complaining so if i save this so yeah that's much better and uh, yeah here it should so if i run this again and let's look at the bottom part so uh, print x here so we got a value of 19 uh, this statement didn't get printed because value of x is not 3 so comparison didn't get printed this got printed so we got logical here and uh, is uh, print 19 equal to x so 19 double equal to x will give us a boolean value true and we got true and then using a not variable we, we got the reverse of the true that is false so we use this uh, next is uh, let's uh, let's use uh, uh, try and learn uh, about bitwise operation so bitwise uh, operator we have got and a symbol which is uh, like it, in bitwise uh, bitwise it's uh, and uh, and uh, what it does is uh, sets uh, each each bit to one if both bits are one we'll we'll learn about more about bitwise uh, uh, binary representation and then how this bitwise work so similarly this pipe symbol is for or so it sets uh, a bit to one if one of the two bits are one and xor which is this caret symbol which is it sets the bit to one if only one of the two bits are one and uh, tilde symbol is not is inverse uh, all the bits uh, the two less than symbols is uh, shifts uh, it shifts the uh, bitwise representation if push by uh, pushing the zeros uh, from right to left so we'll learn more about that similarly right side shift is uh, two greater than symbol so we'll learn more about this but before that we'll just learn a little bit about bitwise representation uh, for the people who are, who are new to bit, bitwise uh, representation of decimal number so quickly i'll go through it so on the left hand column here i am having a decimal number 0 to 15 and on right hand side i've got a binary number from 0 to 15 so binary is a number where you can only have 0 and 1 so 
and uh, so if I want to represent any number here then I should have a equivalent binary number now the way it works is four zeros is zero um, with four, one is the last becomes one and then one zero for two one one for three one zero zero for four one zero one for five one one zero for six one 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 for seven and then the fourth one uh, uh, binary becomes one and rest all become zero so which is eight and so on and so forth so we have got number till 15 uh, and if the number is 16 then the fifth uh, you, you get added the fifth number and it becomes the binary representation of 16 would be one zero 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 so that's uh, the just a quick uh, explanation of decimal and binary so uh, I put together an uh, example for easy understanding of decimal and binary. So I've got three decimal number A equal to 60, B equal to 13 and C equal to 0. Now the binary equivalent of 60 is this. I've highlighted it and the binary equivalent of 13 is this. Now. You can easily find that out using a calculator so let's use not the scientific calculator let's use the programmer calculator all right so if I, if I do binary 60 the bin number is uh, binary sorry if I do decimal 60 the binary number is 00111100 as you can see here uh, and same with 13 you can check you can check 13 and you will get uh, 1101 so let me minimize that now let's do some operations so I've done uh, C equal to A and B so what should happen is A is this B is this so if I do A and B so it should do so it will compare uh, so this and this is 0 so if I highlight this so it will do so this highlighted one is 1 and this is 0 so answer will be 0 uh, similarly this is 1 this is 0 sorry this is 1 so answer will be 1 similarly this is 1 this is 1 so answer will be 1 rest all will be 0 so let's run this <clears throat> so so when I do C equal to A and B so it is uh, if if we go back to our <clears throat> sets each bit to one if both the bits are one yep yeah? so hence the answer is 12 yeah similarly if i do or so if i highlight this and if i do or of this so so it will be zero zero one 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 zero one yeah so as the answer will be this which will be 61 so as we can see here um, similarly if we do XOR uh, the answer will be if I highlight this again it will be it will be so if we take this XOR is sets each bit to one if only one of the two bits are one hence we got 00110001 and the answer is 49 for XOR we are, we'll look at uh, this three example now one is invert so it's invert of A so A is this one so it will do the invert of everything 
so 0 becomes 1, 1 becomes 0. Also positive becomes negative sign. So hence uh, we got the answer of uh, minus 61. Now the last two example, it's an interesting one. So here we are saying shift A to uh, by two side, bitwise uh, two side to the left hand side. So A is this one and we want to shift it to two side. So 1, 1, this this 2, 1, 1 will go to the left hand side and we will get 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 and the answer is 240 as you can see. Similarly, for right, right hand side uh, operator, shift right operator, A greater than a, greater than 2, everything will shift to position to the its right. So the answer will become 15. Yep. So as you can see, the answer is 15. So that's uh, our bitwise operation. So in this session, we have learned about uh, Arithmetic operator, assignment operator, comparison operator, logical operator, and bitwise operator. For bitwise oper uh, operators, uh, because it's slightly complicated, is uh, interviewer favorite topic. Uh, Sometimes logical operator is not. So that's it uh, in this session. Keep uh, practicing and uh, let's uh, meet in our next section, which is a string. Chapter number nine, string formatting. Uh, in this chapter, we are going to learn about uh, uh, all the methods provided by Python. There are at least uh, three dozen to four dozen uh, methods provided by Python. So it's good to know some of them um, because it will be very handy. String formatting is very much used in the real life world. Uh, there is a lot of uh, times you need to format your string um, in the programming world uh, to get the desired out output uh, in files you have to represent the data in certain format and you need to do string formatting all the time so to start with uh, there are two functions which uh, we have already seen print and length so we can print a string and we can uh, find the um, the length of the string. Next is uh, all the methods provided by Python for string. I would like uh, if you want to pause the video here and uh, just read through uh, all uh, all these uh, methods. There are, as I said, there are three dozen um, odd methods provided by Python for the string. So all the ones which uh, are marked with uh, black font are regular like I have used them regularly um, I'll just read through one or two and you will get the idea so capitalize is convert the first character to the uppercase so if you want to convert just the first character use capitalize uh, similarly caseful if you want to convert everything to lowercase convert string into lowercase use caseful <coughs> count is returns the number of time a specified uh, value occurs in a string and so on and so forth so yep if you pause and have a read i will move on to my next set of methods so this is the next one so is lower is a boolean and returns true or false if <clears throat> all character in the string are lowercase it will uh, written true similarly all all the methods with uh, starting with is um, is is uh, uh, returns a boolean value so is numeric if if the string has got a numeric suppose the string is one two three and if you say is numeric string one two three then it will return you true um, similarly is upper is upper and so on so again pause the video and go through all of this and uh, yeah i'll move on to the next one if you see split for example uh, splits the uh, string into a list we'll see an example of uh, split similarly strip we'll also see, see strip in our example so 
there you go those are the list of methods so let's go to our example so the aim of the example is to try different um, string formatting uh, methods provided by python so um, i'm defining my variable a as a hello comma world and the first uh, exercise the first example is to print what is there in position one so we all know by now that first position is zero so if i say position one then e will should get printed uh, similarly length of a uh, uh, string so length is uh, how much the length of this hello world is so if i count them let's let me mark it and then yeah if i count them so it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so i should get answer 13 uh, so i've introduced uh, next i've introduced uh, a variable b uh, and purposely kept a space here and then i'm concatenating the two strings so c equal to a plus b so it is a and b uh, joined together and then printing it so for now let's run it and see till line number 12 what happens so as i mentioned here in our line number four we'll get answer e for line number seven that is print length a we got answer 13 and for concatenating string we got both a and b concatenated so at this point uh, let's print let's put uh, some bifurcation in here so that we know we don't have to look at the one about that and uh, let's clear this now here is a give me print b give me from position 2 to position 5 so uh, b is this so give me so this is position let me highlight it so this is position 0 position 1 position 2 so it is saying give me from position 2 to position 5 so i should get o o d uh, find the number of times uh, space is there in c so let's run this and then we'll have more okay so so if i scroll down a little bit more yeah there you go so i got a uh, ood and number of time the space is there in our example so in this there's one space here two space here and three space here so we got the answer three which is this one now this example i'm saying index of world so in this uh, what is the index where the word world appears so the index would be the answer would be zero one two three four five six seven yeah so seventh position uh, world has appeared so i got the answer seven now is c is numeric yeah so it's it, the answer will be boolean so c the value of c is this so is it numeric no so the answer is false now i've defined a new variable d which is one two three and i'm asking is the numeric so i got the answer to true now convert a string to a lowercase so I converted everything uh, hello world good morning to all lowercase um, now this is a replace a replace is uh, very much used in uh, real world and uh, you often replace uh, delimiters uh, from one to another or replace space with uh, no space and things like that so here I'm replacing world with student and uh, yeah i got uh, hello students so world is got, got replaced with student and um, this one split i'm saying split wherever there is a, a space so 
in return I got a list so square bracket we all know square bracket is list round bracket is tuple and curl bracket is set yeah so I got a square bracket which is list and I've got this uh, hello hello world good morning got uh, split into four values of list hello world uh, exclamation good and morning all right last two examples so strip now what does strip do is it will take out a blank space from the leftmost of the first part of the string and the end part of the string so because we don't have any so in in this so not this so this one in this we don't have a space in front and space at the end so this strip won't do much so it will just print whatever it is but if I had a space in front or at the end it will just strip it off and finally upper it will convert everything to uppercase so you can see hello world good morning so that's all uh, for the string formatting please do try all the different types which are provided and uh, do understand the subtle difference between so many functions uh, sorry methods provided by python and uh, it will be helpful in the certification also it will be helpful in interview preparation thank you chapter number 10 if else if else statement now python supports the usual logical condition from uh, mathematics um, so if statement uh, python uh, relies on the indentation so from here on like till now we haven't used uh, indent indentation and uh, didn't mention about it but uh, for if statement while statement loops uh, nested loops we will have to use uh, indentation and uh, uh, we'll learn more about it when uh, I show you the example like languages like uh, Java or C sharp don't need an indentation, but uh, Python does need it and uh, you need to follow some the indentation so otherwise the program will complain to uh, run the file and you will see the error um, the other thing about uh, the if elif else is in case uh, you want to write a if condition but you want to do nothing then you use the past statement um, it's something similar to the continue statement but uh, we'll learn more about the continue statement as well in the uh, in the future sessions but uh, i will tell you more about the if statement in the example so here is our example for the if statement if elif else so i've got a variable a which i've assigned it a value of 200 <clears throat> i've got a variable b which i've got assigned a value 33 now the syntax for the if is is word if so i'll highlight it word if and then the assignment like if uh, b is so in this example i'm saying if b is greater than a then uh, print b is greater than a elif if a is equal to b then print a, a equal to b and finally if both of this condition doesn't happen uh, then else condition will run it's a uh, kind of similar to a plain English language where we say if this do certain things else do something else so similar to that uh, now the few things to notice here is uh, there is a colon at the end of a if statement also the 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 next the code which we run inside the if statement needs to be indented so uh, python requires you to at least leave one space after the if but general practice is uh, you can see uh, this uh, pycharm is telling me to leave four spaces so as soon as i leave four spaces uh, pycharm is happy and uh, it stopped complaining so i'll do the same thing i'll leave one two 
three four spaces it'll stop complaining this as well and one two three four so four spaces here and it has stopped complaining about this um, so this is uh, so we can use uh, comparison so here we are using comparison we can also use a logical operation where we can say if a equal to b and c equal to d so we can use and statement or statement uh, we can use that uh, the aim is to have the output of this highlighted stuff as a boolean value true or false yeah so that's the aim so let's run this and then we'll see uh, what we get and it should be more clearer so a is 200 b is 33 i'm running this and so code would have gone inside the first if statement and is b greater than a b is not greater than a because b is 33 a is greater than b so it would have gone into uh, the else if is a equal to b double equal to b so is a is not equal to b so it would have ignored both of this and it would have, it would have printed uh, it gone inside the else statement and printed a is greater than b so uh, one more thing I like personally, I don't like, uh, I, I like my code to be clean and I like uh, uh, proper, I like to mention this one, so inside the brackets, so if I run this, yeah, but it is more readable, like if I have uh, and statement in in between then uh, it, it is more readable but uh, it's your choice if you want to use without uh, brackets or with brackets it's up to you uh, yep yeah. and it is more happy now yep yeah. cool now if you don't want this indentation yep yeah, uh, there is one one other way of doing this is this one so this is all in one line so I'm saying print a if a is greater than B else print B yeah there's one line of code no indentation so this is something what the Python supports so if I run this so it has printed a because a is greater than B so it has printed a now let's learn about the pass statement. So let me uncomment this. So, yep. And it wants me to, it's not, it, it'll run the program, even though it, it is giving me warning here because it wants me to leave four spaces. So one, two, and now it has stopped complaining. Save it and run it. So basically I'm saying here, if B is greater than A, go inside this if statement but that's it don't run anything uh, we'll see some example maybe in future session where and how to use this pass but for now um, I think this should be good enough now next uh, is the nested if statement yeah uh, so if statement inside an if statement so let's have a look at this so I purposely kept uh, made some indentation not an error but a warning so uh, let's uh, clean the code and then it will be good example for you as well so x equal to 40 if x is greater than 10 then print about 10 if x is greater than 20 then uh, so it has gone so all of this code is inside the top if statement so it is a nested if so if is x is greater than 20 so and also greater than 20 it will print if uh, if not it will say but not about 20 so it will say about 10 but not about 20 so we'll we'll try some example but let's clean the code first so one two one two three four so this if statement needs to be in the same line and then again this is one two three four and one two and then one two three four yep it's much more readable 
and we have got only one error here if you can see and it is basically saying don't leave that much empty space just one line after the code finishes is good enough so let's save it and i got a green tick here yep so no problem with the code so let's run the code so 40 is about 10 and also is about 20 so let's let's just change this um, to say um, 15 save and then run so it is about 10 but not about 20 so it is going inside the if statement and it has run the else part of the nested if one more example i'll just say five yeah so it should say nothing because it didn't it didn't go inside this if statement it just the first condition itself failed so it won't go any anywhere it'll just uh, come out of this whole if statement and just there's no operation for us so we can say uh, else print below 10 let's execute this below 10 yeah so that's nice and clear and uh, yeah we have completed our if else if elif and else come on next uh, we'll learn the, about loops in our next session thank you chapter number 11 loops and iterators so in our previous chapter we learned about uh, if elif else statement so that is useful if you got you know the condition and uh, you want to choose between uh, different uh, conditions but if you want to run anything um, in a continuous uh, loop the loop can be for example if you want to run a sequence of statement um, for 100 times uh, for example you won't you won't use a if else statement there you need a thing something like for loop or a while loop um, now for loop is used for iterating over a sequence now sequence can be a list a tuple a dictionary a set also it can be a string so if you want if a string is let's say hello world and uh, you want to run uh, the loop for each character of the string you can do that uh, similarly uh, we know that list tuple dictionary is set they store it uh, a value or a key value pair and if you want to run it via uh, individual value or key value pair you can do that using uh, loop um, using for loop similarly while loop can execute a set of statement as long as the condition is true yeah. So in while loop, you can say while the value of x is uh, 3, kind of keep running the loop. So it is kind of keep running it till the value is 3. As soon as x becomes 4, just come out of the loop. Um, so as simple as that. Now there are three things you can uh, add inside a loop. So first is break statement. Now to explain a break statement, uh, for example, you have given a loop of 100 for x uh, run uh, a for loop for 100 loops. But as soon as the value of uh, uh, the x variable x is 50, just come out of the loop. In case the value of the uh, loop is 50 just don't run the loop just come out of the loop so you will give a statement break statement there on contrary uh, the continue statement is uh, if you run the for loop for 100 times but you don't want to run the 50th 
when the va variable value x is 50 so you can say when it's 50 just continue don't run any statement in the for loop or while loop when the value is certain value just don't run it just continue continue with the next iteration and the range is now python provides this range function uh, and uh, it returns a sequence of number starting from zero by default and increment by one by default and end at a specific number which you have provided in the range now we'll see an example of uh, all this uh, break continue range uh, in the for loop and in the while loop let's see an example of a for loop so what i have done is as we know square bracket means list and i have assigned in a fruits I've added uh, I've assigned a, a created a list called fruit with apple banana cherry and i'm doing a for loop um, of all the fruits so the valuable the value of x is a iterable value so first time the value x will have the value apple the second time it will have banana and third time it will have cherry and each time it will print uh, and the value similarly if i have got a for loop um, and my loop is to run the string is banana i want x so x will have each time x will have in the for loop it will have a value of each character of the banana we'll see that let's save this and let's run this all right so first time in this for loop uh, it has run the value of x becomes apple banana and cherry and each time uh, the print statement has been executed and we got our apple banana and cherry and the second time uh, the banana word banana the value x gets each character of the banana because that's how you can work uh, and the for loop works and you you print x where it prints banana out here now interesting thing to see as with the if statement the end of the if statement and end of the for statement it requires a colon Yep. Now let's have a look at a slightly different. So let me comment this, and it requires a space. Comment this, comment this, and comment this and space. And let me uncomment this, and let me. let me do that as well one two three four one two three four one two okay there you go that's so what I'm trying to do here is in a for loop for of the fruit similar to the previous one uh, I'm printing uh, printing the fruit but in case uh, if statement in case the value of x is banana which is our second fruit then stop stop the loop so don't go don't bother going anything so here it will come out of the loop as soon as it encounters banana and in the continue statement um, I'm saying in a for loop if I if the value of x is banana then don't do anything uh, continue in this for loop so it'll, it'll go to the line number 18 and it will execute the next value of x so let's let's run this so in our first example here um, it has run it apple and banana and after banana it has come out of the loop so <clears throat> and here uh, as soon as it got banana it said go to line number 18 and run the next iteration of the for loop so we didn't print any banana here so there you go so we have learned about uh, for loop and uh, the, the break and continue statement here next uh, example is a nested for loop so so yep 
Poichon is complaining about this. Uh, and it will stop complaining. And one space extra line and save. So I've got here ADJ, my variable is, and I've got a list here um, of red, big, tasty. And the fruit, I've got the same as apple, banana, cherry as last time. Last time, and I want to run this in a uh, nested for loop. So my ADJ fruit, so it'll run, it'll run this uh, in three times. But inside, so every time a value of uh, x is red, it'll try and run this three times one for apple one for banana one for cherry and it'll print uh, the combination so let's see how it behaves so run nested loops so so first time i get uh, red apple this one then uh, red banana then red cherry uh, then big apple big banana and you you got the point there, I guess. Um, so that's our nested loop. Next, uh, we will use the range function in the for loop. Um, so I made sure there is no error, uh, no warning, no error in my example. So let me explain you this one. So let's clear this one. And uh, yes, so so range can have one or two or three parameters so in first case i'm basically saying range of six so we know the default value of the range is starting with zero is the default value and increment by one is the default value so let's go back to our program and execute this okay before that let me put a Okay, two should be enough, and uh, let's run it again. Okay, so first one runs from zero to five. So I'm saying for uh, x x in range six, print x. So so here it starts from zero, and it will increment by one by default, and it'll run six times. So each time when I print it, so it'll run. The x value of x will have a value of 0 up to 5. And once it has completed 6 iteration, it will come out of the for loop. So there you go. In the second example, <clears throat> it will start from 2, run till 6. So this is the starting position and this is uh, the end position. Increment is 1. So it will run from 2 to position number 6 which is 5 and uh, you get uh, 2 3 4 5 yeah uh, print that and in the third iteration I'm basically saying start from 2 go till 30 but increment not by 1 but by 3 so the default incrementation uh, we are making it uh, to 3 so here the first value of x is 2 the second value of x is increment 2 by 3 which is 5 and third is 8 and so on and so forth it'll run till uh, the index is 30 which is 29 number 29 and then it'll stop finally let's have a look at the while uh, loop There you go. My program is nice and no error, as you can see. Uh, <clears throat> so, aim is to show you some different combination of while loop. So, 
let me run this and uh, I will be able to and let's put a print statement here to demarcate our output Let's run it again, save it and run the while loop. Okay, what happened here? Okay, so basically I'm here saying value of i is 1. And then it, if value of i is less than 6, keep running this for loop. Yeah, so if I don't have this statement here, if I comment this, this while loop will run infinitely and you will have your program will consume all your uh, memory and then it will give code dump or you know, it will break at some point of time so you need to give some conditional statement so here uh, I'm, I'm saying uh, increment the for loop we already know what this does so it will say i equal to i plus one so it will increment so when this statement is running for the first time the value of i will be two it, in line number four it will say if two is less than six yes it is less than six and it will continue so here we we can see the output is one two three four five in the sixth iteration uh, it will come to line number four and say is six less than six the value is no it will come out of the loop now let's see an example of break and continue statement so similarly i'm doing uh, but i'm i'm saying if the value of i is 3 just come out of the loop don't bother running any more loop so here we can see it has run for three times printed uh, one two three and then it decided to come out of the loop and lastly the continue statement we know when the continuous uh, there then it says uh, don't bother running any part of current iteration go to the line number 21 and run the net next iteration so the output here you can see it has skipped number three but it has printed one two four five six so that's our um, for loop while loop and range we have gone through all of the different variation of loop with break statement and continue statement in it so um, yeah keep uh, practicing and uh, yeah do practice all the different variation of the loops and uh, we will look at the function in our next session chapter number 12 function So a function is a block of code which only runs when it is called. You can pass data known as parameters into a function. A function can return data as a result. So in this uh, session we will learn about uh, creating a function, how to call a function and how to pass an argument or a parameter into a function. Let's uh, look in, uh, into an example for the function. So I've written this uh, sample code. Um, now if you can see the light is green. So there's no um, code improvement uh, suggested by PyCharm. Also, I uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, the indentation, you can, you can either use uh, for space or you can use tab. So, but uh, PyCharm sometimes is temperamental. If you if you use a uh, uh, if you mix and match a tab and uh, spaces, then uh, it does complain sometimes. So uh, either stick to a tab uh, with uh, four spaces, uh, or just stick to spaces, adding spaces yourself. So just a tip for you. So here. Uh, the function um, I've defined a function called uh, my function and I'm just it's a very simple function where I've got a print statement saying um, hello from a function yeah and I'm calling this function so when a Python code is executed it will go from line number one it will go down it will encounter a function uh, but it won't do anything at this point it will just go to line number seven and execute this one fun function 
when this function my my underscore function is executed it will go to line number three and um, run the line number four and you will see the print statement so before i go down to line number 14 let's uh, run this program and let's see how it behaves so as you can see it uh, uh, my line number seven where i'm calling uh, the function name uh, it just executes the function and prints me hello from the function then uh, it'll print the separator which uh, i've given using print statement now after that i've defined a second function now the idea of this function is like here you can see i've not passed any parameters here yeah so in this i'm passing the name and then i'm printing hello the name yeah so in this next uh, line number 18 to 20 i'm passing in the name steve harry and lisa and then um, for each of this uh, call i get my uh, output as hello steve hello harry hello lisa now let's see what happens if i don't pass anything yeah so let's see if i do this so i'm not passing anything i'm saving this file and uh, so what should happen here yeah because this function is expecting a name but i'm not passing a name let's see yeah the as you can see it has uh, the program as uh, during runtime it has print harry like steve harry when trying to execute this line number 20 it is giving me error yeah so let's restore so how do we overcome this problem like uh, in the case where i don't know whether my function will have an parameter or not so let's look at the next example so my function 2 uh, so python provides you with this so here kids star kids so uh, it basically is saying i can have multiple argument if in case uh, i don't know how many argument i'm going to pass then uh, like three or four so in this example i'm passing three uh, and the second uh, line number 32 is three line number 33 is four so let's let's run this again Yep, so this is the output. So I'm passing uh, three names and four names, and each time line 28, 29 is getting called. And the idea is the youngest person is the second uh, item. So Steve becomes zero, Harry becomes one, and Lisa becomes two. So, so hence I'm getting Lisa. Now coming back to our problem where what if uh, we don't know uh, if the name is going to be passed. Python has provided you with the default parameter. So I'm calling I'm calling my function 3. First time with UK. Second time with India. But third time I'm not passing the any parameters. So, so what this does is it... Uh, assigns a default value to the parameter so if nothing is passed country is Norway um, otherwise the country is whatever you have passed in so the country value of country becomes whatever you passed in and then I'm printing so here you can see when I print when I call my function three four times it prints uh, UK India Norway USA so a nice feature provided by Python and uh, my function four i'm creating a list square bracket as we know is list by now so i'm creating a fruit uh, apple banana cherry and the fruits is a list so when i run my my function four in line number 59 i'm passing in a list fruits um, that will eventually call this code uh, fruits will be passed in the form of a list 
and uh, uh, in the for loop uh, food the value x uh, which is an iterator now it will have a value um, first apple and then I'm printing apple then it will have banana and then cherry and it will print the three so let's have a look in our so as you can see it has uh, printed apple banana and cherry and uh, finally uh, in this example I'm uh, kind of a similar example to earlier where this time I'm passing a number so I'm saying uh, call my function my function 5 and I'll pass a number 3 number 5 and number 9 here so here the value first time when I'm calling line number 68 with number 3 the value of x here becomes number 3 and it returns uh, 5 into 3 15 and then it gets printed here so as you can see here similarly all these values are printed so that's a, a brief introduction to a function and uh, I've, I've gone through different uh, uh, variation in a function uh, with no arguments uh, one arguments multiple arguments default argument uh, so let's go through a uh, few of the function built-in function provided by Python there are several dozens of them I have listed them all of them so I would request you to pause your video here and just uh, read this for example just we'll go through a few of them so app is uh, this function basically re uh, returns an absolute value of a number so boolean will return uh, boolean value of a specific object so yeah just pause your video here go through all of this uh, there might be some questions from here uh, in the if at all you plan to give your certification you will use uh, this in your day-to-day -day programming life uh, some of these functions for sure uh, so this is the first list second list is here we have used a few of them in the second list like we have used float like converting returning a float number also we have used input uh, where we are allowing user to input we have seen several examples of it and then we have seen uh, int as well uh, uh, and third is uh, yeah the third list also uh, the length we have seen list we have seen returns a list minimum is return the smallest item in an iterable object and so on and so forth so yeah just pause the video and uh, just uh, read this uh, uh, list of built-in function and finally this one uh, print we we know we have used it uh, so many times and uh, yeah we, we have used range uh, we have used uh, type um, so there you go those are the built-in functions yeah, it's good to go through all of them and read through and just understand what all the differences and what are the features of this uh, built-in functions now a brief talk about iter iterators now it an iterator is an object that contains a countable number of values an iterator is an object that can be iterated upon meaning uh, that you can traverse through all the values now in our earlier example we have seen uh, we have seen a, a list we are passing a list uh, here uh, here we are passing the list and so in turn python converts the x is an iterable object and uh, uh, in, in this for loop it becomes uh, iterator and uh, the value of food gets uh, iterated over this for loop so to explain uh, iterator let's go to our code again and I've written so in this example uh, I've written uh, so as we have seen earlier uh, fruits has got value a list uh, apple banana cherry now the iter we have not seen this till now so iter is an iterator and uh, fruit is a list so 
we are saying uh, basically my it is the iterator object and now instead of going through the for loop we can also say print uh, next in my my it so my iterator the object print the next item next item into it and then i'm printing this three times so i get the next first item i get is as uh, apple the second one banana and third one cherry now i put this print uh, so that we exactly know where our iterator object is so um, so printing this so this is the place where uh, I am printing apple, banana, and cherry. So as you can see, uh, this is the use of iterator. But uh, um, also uh, in a for loop, uh, it is already converting into this object, and uh, it's going through the for loop. Uh, so automatically doing the next for you. So that's it for uh, function um, the iterator. And uh, let's go to the scope now. Now scope is um, very important in terms of uh, understanding the uh, understanding the scope of a variable. And uh, so let's go through this. When you define a variable uh, inside a region, so a variable is only available from inside the region it is created, and this is called as a scope. Now in a nested scope. The variable is not available outside the function, but is available for any function. So let's assume you got, uh, you have defined a function, and you got a next nested function. So a function inside a function. Now, if you define a variable in the first function, the main function, that variable will be available for all the functions inside that function, but it won't be available outside that function. Third one is a variable created in the main body of the Python code is is a global variable and belongs to global scope. So we'll we'll see an example of this. So any variable which is defined in the main body belongs. To, uh, you can access uh, that variable anywhere inside the function, outside the function, from anywhere. Okay. Now if you operate with the same variable name inside and outside. So if you define a variable, for example, uh, x. Um, in the main body and inside the function then python will treat it as a two separate variable one available in a global scope and one available in the local scope if you want uh, to make any variable global inside a function then you use a global keyword now all of this uh, might sound uh, a bit complex at this point of time but as soon as we go through some example it will all become clear and uh, so let's go through it. All this, this uh, uh, understanding of scope is very important and uh, is a favorite uh, uh, interview questions because uh, the interviewer would like to know your understanding of scope. So let's go through it. Now, as you can see, uh, the code is uh, doesn't, PyCharm is not giving me any recommendation and uh, we already know the indentation is either a tab or a four spaces is ideally recommended by PyCharm. Um, so here, what I'm doing is I'm defining a function from line four to line six, and I'm, I've got a variable X, which has got a value fix 50. Now this X has got a, a, a scope of local scope, like it, the scope of the value x variable x is inside this function yeah so when i print this uh, print x so let's 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 do this so uh, run okay so when i call this function this this code is getting called and the print x has access to this variable x and it gets printed so i get 50. now for example if i say after this print x I want to access this variable x outside in the main code, main Python code. Then the Python will straight away uh, tell you the x is unresolved. You can't execute this code. So because x is variable x is not available outside. Yeah. So there you go. That's 
our first uh, one uh, second one is uh, let's let's go through the nested uh, scope first now here uh, i am defining a function inside the function so my uh, the first function is uh, my function and i'm defining uh, a variable called x and giving it a value 300 and uh, there is another function inside so if you can see the indentation it is matching this so another function called my inner function and i'm trying to access uh, i'm printing x which is defined in the first function yeah so this is uh, this uh, value the my inner function has got access to the function because it is part of this main function uh, and uh, here i'm calling minor function from inside the main function so the the code uh, the way it will execute it in line number 12 i'm calling my function which will uh, go to line number four and then it will define it will define x is equal to 300 then inside this it will look at this code but it won't execute it it will come to line number nine which is calling the inner function at this point it will execute line seven and eight and it will print x so let's execute this yeah so x is getting printed as 300 yeah now let's see if this x is available outside so if i as soon as i try to access this from outside in line number 13 i'm getting uh, error from python so yep so that's that's uh, our nested scope now a global scope uh, i've kept an error here purposely because pycharm is or python is trying to tell me there is uh, a variable x defined in line number three for 300 but i'm using the same variable here yeah so do i want this so uh, internally python what is doing is it will assign this this variable is x and is in the global scope and the variable defined inside this fu uh, function my function this variable x is in the scope of this my function and it's local to it so when i do this print statement in line number nine it'll print value 200 but when i do a print in line number 14 it'll print line it'll print 300 so let's execute this so as you can see uh, first is uh, my function will be executed and it has printed line 200 and then print text uh, in line number 14 gets print, uh, 300 gets printed yeah now to overcome this global x so i can say x is global yeah so let's see what happens here so i'm i've defined uh, x is 300 but in line number seven i'm saying x is global yeah and i'm assigning a value 200 to x so uh, when i run uh, my function i definitely know i'll uh, 200 will get printed but at this point of time will 200 get printed or 300 that's good question and let's run the scope and we'll see 200 is getting printed now why is that because we have assigned x defined x as a global scope so this value of this gets changed as soon as this code is executed and the value of the global x uh, uh, the uh, x variable which is uh, now both of this x is global scope and uh, the value gets assigned to 200 um, and there you go so that's that's all about scope uh, so in this session we have learned uh, about uh, function and different uh, different uh, variation of function and we have learned about iterator as well and uh, different uh, scope so yeah please practice and uh, in next 
two sessions we will be doing some real life uh, examples whatever we learned so far we'll try to apply them in our real life example hello so so far we have learned in the 12th session we have completed uh, everything is which is required for an entry level python programming and you are ready for your entry level certification you need to do a lot of practice but uh, in this session what we are going to do is uh, try some real life example i've chosen a simple one to start with uh, two example in this session one is a palindrome program and the second is the leap year program so let's have a look at the palindrome program okay so what is palindrome so palindrome is a number is it's basically uh, a word which is same when written backwards or same when written forward yeah so in this program what i'm doing is uh, asking uh, asking a user to uh, enter an input uh, to check if the uh, the word inputted by user is palindrome or not uh, here uh, i've just uh, written this print statement to explain to you how uh, we can use this function uh, provided by a string how can we uh, to check if it is palindrome or not so uh, let's run this program and then i'll explain you what this does so enter your name uh, enter your name is not the right thing so let's say enter your word word to check if is palindrome that sounds better so let's run it again run stop and rerun um, There you go. So enter your word to check if it is uh, palindrome. So let's say uh, 1881. So the string is a palindrome. Okay. Now I want to explain you this three print statements. I'm uh, that using a type statement, I know whatever is inputted by user is a string. Now this one, uh, so basically we are using this print function. Uh, so whatever is inside, so x we know is the input uh, inputted by the user within this curl bracket. So this is the start position uh, before the first colon. Second is the end position. So by default it's start and end, and this is increment uh, or decrement. Yeah. So here I'm incrementing by two. So for 1881, this the first value printed is one, and the second value printed is eight here. Uh, now, if I want a word to be in a reverse order, I will use minus one. So using x open square bracket, two colons, and then with minus one, I get the reverse of the actual word. So using this feature, I am using it in the if statement. So I'm saying if x is same as the reverse of the x. If it is same, I'm saying uh, the string is palindrome. If not, I'm saying string is not palindrome. So just for completeness, now let's comment this line of code, let's save it, and uh, Typo corrected. There you go. Uh, let me run this again. <clears throat> so enter your word to check if it's palindrome. So let's say habit. So is habit a palindrome? No, it is not a palindrome. Yeah. If I write habit in the reverse order, it won't be same as habit. Yeah. The second example is to check. Uh, I'm asking the user to enter 
uh, year uh, year entered is a right uh, is a leap year or if it's not a leap year so this program also checks uh, if a number is numeric like uh, in the real real life now real world uh, example we have to check uh, we can't assume user is uh, going to enter a, a number in the uh, user can enter a string so uh, first if statement here i'm checking if the user has entered a uh, so i'm using this is numeric function of the string and if the user is has not entered a number if user has entered some string then I'm saying please enter the right data and I'm exiting the uh, function. So this is my function, easily peer function. And then this line of code, line number 18, I'm, I'm calling that function. And uh, the value of that function, uh, now this function is returning a Boolean value true or false. So I'm storing that value in, in no error. And then in this while loop, I am checking if uh, if there is uh, error, then keep keep calling the is uh, leap year function. Now before we execute this function, uh, this program, uh, let's have a look at this else if elif and else statement as well. So here I'm using the modulus four. So a number suppose a, a user has inputted a number let's say 2000 now first of all convert the string into an int, int. so i'm using that uh, built-in function int and once i've converted to an int so 2000 becomes like string becomes 2000 integer and then i'm doing modulus 4 now if uh, if it is 2000 then the the result of this will be 0 so is 0 equal to 0 yes then it is leap number and return true then the year which i've entered is uh, 2001 for example then the modulus won't be 0 it will be 1 so is 1 uh, equal to 0 no it is not so it will go into the else statement and so on and so forth so let's execute this uh, and let's see what we get so give me the year so yeah i i prefer a space here so for now let's say 1010 let's see it's not a leap year yeah it came out of the program but let me save it and let me run this again uh let's take 2000 is it a leap year it is it's a leap year yeah so there you go uh, one more run and this time around i'm giving a string so i say i type 200i so typo purposefully giving a typo so it is basically it didn't come out of the program as you can see it is uh, because i'm returning false here and in this while statement it will it is calling the leap here again yeah so so it is asking the user to type uh, type in again so this time user again does a typo so it will ask me again and then once user use the right data it'll say it's a leap year and, and then exit the program so i'm using a while statement to to keep running till the user enters the right data yeah uh, so that's our two example for this session uh, we will see slightly more uh, difficult one in the next session and then we'll talk about certification thank you In the second session of uh, real life example, let's have a look at the um, a very simple example of uh, converting miles to kilometers. So in this example, uh, user will just input uh, in miles and will convert it into kilometers. So what I have is I have got a function uh, which will ask an input um, 
in miles and then I'm checking if the <clears throat> input given is a numeric number and if it is then uh, I'll simply convert it into um, kilometers now the uh, formula is uh, kilometer equal to miles into 1.60934 uh, and then I'm just printing the kilometer I'm just using uh, five decimal places and returning true in case um, if it is not numeric if the input entered is not numeric then uh, I'll ask the user to enter the input again so this is the main line of code so here it will call the function mile to kilo and if I got it true so first time the user enters true then it won't it will never enter the while statement so let's run it and uh, let's see whether we get the desired result so okay I want to convert uh, 10 kilo uh, 10 miles into kilometers so I got 6.0934 so let's say I want to I don't want five decimal I just want two decimal so let's run it again run and uh, I get 10 again so I have got answer in two decimal now 16.09 so that sounds good now let's run it again but this time let's give uh, a typo so one O I've written instead of zero I've written O and then it'll say enter it again yeah um, I can say 10 come out so I can say here print um, please enter the number again looks like a typo save it and then let's try again so one and O oh, please enter the number again looks like a typo and one zero and there you go so that's our example so that's uh, miles to kilometer so let's have a look at uh, one more uh, Fibonacci sequence now what is a Fibonacci sequence and how we are going to print it so a Fibonacci sequence is a number a sequence is in so it starts with zero and followed by one and after that it follows a particular uh, pattern that is it adds the previous two number so this the third number is made up of the sum of the last two numbers so zero plus one is one and then one plus one is two and then 2 plus 1 is 3 and so on and so forth yeah so that's a Fibonacci sequence and uh, we want to print this using uh, our program and we want to control it so we'll ask user to enter the nth term that is how many numbers you uh, want the sequence to be and depending upon that the program will generate the Fibonacci sequence so I'm taking an input here uh, and I'm storing it so I'm asking how how many terms uh, does the user wants and I'm converting into an integer and storing it in nth term um, because we know the first two sequence is going to be 0 and 1 so I'm assigning this uh, n1 n2 is 0 and 1 now if you can notice I purposely use uh, this kind of uh, uh, assignment just to let you know that you can do this way as well so I can also do n1 equal to 0 n2 equal to 1 but just uh, I, I prefer uh, assigning it uh, n1 equal to 0 n2 equal to 1 rather than this but uh, this is how you can do it as well one line code so if you want to reduce on the number of lines of the code you can do this 
<clears throat> also the count I'm making it as zero and I'll use the count later on uh, now first of all in the if statement checking if uh, the nth term <clears throat> uh, inputted by user is if it is zero or less than zero then I'm saying please enter a positive number if it is one then I'm just printing n1 and that's it job done <clears throat> if it is uh, more than one then I'm going in a while loop I'm printing n1 and then I've got three variables here the nth variable the n1 and n2 so I'll do nth is equal to n1 plus n2 so I've got, I got so in the nth I've got my uh, next number and then I'll assign n1 uh, n2 to n1 and then uh, <clears throat> and then increment the count yeah so that way the while loop will keep, keep on continuing till the counter is reached the value of 10 and then I'll I'll get uh, the nth term uh, and it will get printed so let's see let's run this so I want 10 term and I got my answer which is 0 1 1 2 3 5 etc etc but as you can see it is not in the horizontal it has gone vertical that's because I'm using print statement without any end of line so um, we know the print syntax is this so our end equal to by default is new line so I I instead of new line I don't want it in new line I want it in uh, same line so I can say end equal to space so let's save it and run it again again 10 sequence and there you go I got it in the desired format if this is the format you wanted um, and uh, there you go there you got your Fibonacci sequence um, and we kind of learned few things here one is um, this one uh, also we reiterated how to use um, the print using end we have we have done this in the input and print in session 3 but uh, it's good to know what all different uh, print statement you can use in different uh, variations so yeah there you go so so we have seen example 3 Fibonacci sequence we have seen uh, kilometer uh, converter miles to kilometer next is um, we are to our end of uh, this uh, course so let's talk about uh, certification so we have discussed everything about uh, the python programmer entry level so there are various different certification from uh, entry level python programming to certificate associate in python programming to certified professional in python programming uh, let's have a look at the syllabus uh, and uh, let's see if we covered so we have seen this uh, uh, we, have, we have been to this website in our first, second session so python institute.org and uh, there are various different uh, certification now the python certification is provided by many other course provider as well so uh, it's good to have some certification uh, if you're uh, if you're a, a kid uh, in school and um, in college then maybe certification you don't need a certification you just need to uh, understand and uh, get the foundation of Python programming correct in case um, you are applying for your first job and it's, it's sometimes good good to show certification it definitely helps you in your CV um, also if you're um, you are into some other programming and you want to get into Python then it's always good to show certification so um, so let's have a look at the syllabus 
so uh, so in the basic concept uh, for the entry level certification we have covered uh, uh, yeah we have covered uh, almost everything from here uh, so that was our first few chapters uh, in data types yeah we covered uh, all the necessary data types required for this certification uh, we have done all the flows if statement uh, while statement for statement in loops range we have done um, I would say yeah just practice the else statement in the while and for loop which we didn't cover we just touched upon it uh, we didn't so yeah have a just uh, expand your um, knowledge base on this one um, it's very simple um, uh, break and continue statement we have covered uh, in the data collection so this part <clears throat> we have done uh, length we have done append insert index everything we have done uh, we have done various things about uh, strings and uh, then in the collection object we have done we have learned about tuple um, and difference between the list tuple set and dictionary and uh, so that's good and the last bit functions so yeah we have learned about defining a function creating a function using a function using the built-in function um, we have done learned about scope we have learned about converting objects into list uh, by using the function uh, the built-in function um, the two things which i think we uh, we didn't look at yet so none is the none keyword is same as uh, the null keyword in other languages like java so it is just uh, basically means assigning a none value so no value to to uh, the variable and recursion i'll just show you one example of recursion um, if you want to just learn more about recursion um, it's it's the mindset how you want to use it it can get slightly tricky but i'll show you one example of both of this and that's our end of this um, entry level um, session so there you go uh, so fibonacci sequence again using recursion yeah uh, so here i purposely I mean, this is for the sake of just introducing none to you so i'm assigning a value none um in the end term and in, immediately i'm assigning a value 10 so uh, the use of this is there's no use of this but just to give you the syntax how it is done so just to introduce that um now how does the recursion work in this programming so i'm i'm saying the end term is 10 so i want 10 10 sequence of it and the same logic as our previous so if it is less than if it is not positive give an error um, now print frequency sequence and then in a for loop i'm calling uh, my uh, function uh, recur fibo yeah recur fibonacci sequence and i'm passing the value i now i uh, so n term is 10 in this example so value of i it's a range yeah so it will go from we'll do it from uh, 0 to 9 so range will create a number from 0 to 9 and value of i will be 0 and then 1 and then 2 etc till the 9 yeah so i will call i'm calling the Recub uh, uh, FIBO by passing zero. So uh, so it will go inside this uh, function, and uh, if it is uh, if the value of n is zero, then return n. 
so it'll it'll come and here it'll come to this for loop and it'll keep going on in this um, in this uh, de definition so let's say the value of n term let's say the value of n i is 5 here yeah so it'll come inside this with the value of 5 um, it will go into the else statement which is here uh, here it is calling the function again so this is recalling it itself with the value of uh, 5 minus 1 4 so I'm passing 4 here and here I'm passing this I'm passing 3 so the same function is called by itself so inside this function this is getting called and then this is getting called and it will keep on calling um, till all the values are returned and then finally you get the you you can you get the print statement yeah so let's run it uh, yep you got the sequence now to understand this problem I would say you add uh, some print print statement here um, and just just try and find out uh, uh, how it is behaving how it is called uh, itself and uh, you will you'll just understand uh, the whole uh, recursive but I think you've got the idea and uh, that's it for this session thank you I have provided the links in the description below for the Python and PyCharm download. I have also recommended three Python books to enhance your knowledge. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.